Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of programmes produced with expert rule software on the way the challenge, indeed the imperative, of net zero can be managed by manufacturers and what kind of help is out there for them. Now clearly investment can be an issue and I'm pleased to welcome Lloyds Bank's Head of Manufacturing, Dave Atkinson, who works closely with Expert Rule in helping manufacturers get started on their journey with the maximum of efficiency and result. And of course, as always, we're joined by Ian Crossley of Expert Rule. Dave, can I start with you? I, I know banks are always there to provide finance to manufacturers, but Lloyd seem to be taking the net zero issue particularly seriously. I'll start by just um, sort of replaying um, the fact that we are a purpose-led organisation and, um, you know, our overarching purpose is around helping Britain prosper. And, but it's, it's a little deeper than that. And, uh, you know, we are actually doing this by creating a, a more sustainable and inclusive future for people and businesses. Uh, and, I, and I guess the way we demonstrate, um, you know, sort of creating finance as a force for good is by creating an environment where we not only demonstrate what we are doing by getting our house in order and making our own personal commitments as a bank, but are investing heavily both to understand how SMEs and particularly SME manufacturers are feeling at the moment, and then responding by shaping and creating a number of initiatives to help them on that journey. We know that SMEs, uh, are desperate for help and guidance, uh, as well as being really clear that they are starting to understand the importance and the opportunities from this net zero journey. What are the key findings that have popped up for you and your colleagues in this process? It's, it's quite timely, um, actually, Nick, because we've just done some uh, sort of fresh research to help us understand where our SME manufacturing clients are in the current stage of this journey. And it's really pleasing that 96% of those that we have consulted with are now really clear uh, about they know and understand uh, net zero and, uh, and sort of what it means to them. And nearly 90% equally are saying that this is really important and we know that we have to respond to this not just from a commercial point of view, but actually ethically, we want to do the right thing. And, and, and about 60% of them have already said that in response to understanding, not just the challenges and the need for this, but also the opportunities that it presents, 60% have now designed and developed their own plan to get there. Equally, um, just over half of those, around 36%, um, have already identified that they understand the impact of net zero on their own brand as a business, and not just from a commerciality point of view, but from an ethical point of view. The skills agenda, as we all know, is a massive challenge to businesses, and labour supply is a real challenge. And actually, the tables have been turned for many of these small businesses when they do find suitable potential employees, whether they be apprentices or others, they're having the tables turned on them and the interviewee is now becoming the interviewer, asking them what they're doing uh, on this journey to net zero. Because again, from the ethical point of view, people want to protect the planet and do the right things and create an environment for their families uh, and, and their long-term future. I think some of this has already been reflected in where a number of manufacturers have got to. About 7% are now already at net zero and 27% have got a really clear target in mind as to when they are going to get or certainly work towards getting to net zero. And I think the benefits that they're telling us around this journey that they're on, 63% are telling us that they have now seen real benefits in terms of waste reduction and energy reduction and 19 percent are already seeing actual monetary savings from the investments that they've made so i think it's clear that smes are well on the way to understanding what the journey needs to be but equally a lot of them are still just crying out for that help support and guidance let's face it smes don't have the resource 
and the cash and the expertise around them like some of the bigger businesses. So they are looking for help and guidance and support. And I think the conversation that we're having today hopefully will help stimulate a few to reflect and think about just what that help and support could be and what's available out there. Ian Crossley, um, fascinating statistics that Dave's just come up with. Uh, what comes up for you as, uh, as, as as particular highlights of what he said? Well, I, th- I think the fact that so well, a relatively high number are starting on the journeys, but I suppose really when you're looking at that, they're really talking about scope one and two for them, um, and obviously that's the start point of the journey. They obviously ultimately, if they're going to take their products into this, will have to take into scope three as well, and it's how how they really address those challenges and where they go to them, because the the ones that they're directly in control of are relatively straightforward to do things about and mitigate. It's the ones that they're not directly in control of. So it, it's how are they how are they considering those and where are they going with those? I must say, Dave, I, I, I was struck by the fantastic ambition on behalf of the the companies you spoke with. But ambition doesn't always equal execution, as we as we know. And you pointed out some of the the, the, the biggest pitfalls, which of course are really around resources and skills. I mean, does Lloyd's have any thoughts around that? What do you see as a way forward um, that SME manufacturers can? can look to perhaps as a way of shaping the future? First of all, if I may um, just think about the different scopes that the SME manufacturers have to impact on here. And we all know that there there are three of these. One is their direct impact. One is their energy provider, really. And the third is the supply chains that they operate in. And I think it's really important to understand that manufacturers, and certainly from our our recent conversations and, and research, almost half have been asked to report on their progress around ESG in the last 12 months. Uh, And and I think that's a big indication that scope three, as Ian has um, just commented on, is becoming ever more important as some of those bigger businesses are having to uh, start to think about how they reduce not just their own uh, sort of direct carbon and emissions and sustainability programs, but also the complex web of supply chains that they operate in and the challenges of some of those transport costs that uh, that most of that most of all businesses are, are facing into i think if i respond more directly about what sort of things um you know do we see happening and what are we doing to try and help uh, those manufacturers i think the one big thing they cry out for is collaboration um you know and this is uh, about the supply chains helping each other and it doesn't necessarily have to impact competitiveness here this is about sharing best practice and actually the supply chains that they are supplying into sharing with them some of the things that they have been doing in order to reduce their own carbon so they can repeat that best practice and if it's tried and tested it, it creates a less risky cost environment um, to the uh, to the SMEs that are just resource poor. I think the other things as well is thinking about uh, investment. We know that there's good liquidity around the sector at the moment, and I think manufacturers um, are still benefiting from some of the huge challenges that they faced into through the COVID impact. But as a consequence of that, they have made some really tough decisions and rationalised a lot of their expenses and, and have benefited in terms of cost reduction, which has helped them gone through the recent challenges of the cost of living in, in, uh, sort of increases that we are all still uh, sort of faced into and challenging. But as a consequence mm-hmm. of that, they do have cash available to invest. Um, but equally, we want to help them. Uh, with that. So any initiatives that SMEs come to with us, we're happy to engage in those discussions and, uh, and, and make finance much more affordable to them by removing arrangement fees or reducing interest costs for uh, yeah, acceptable projects that make those reductions. I think the other thing to reflect on is one of the biggest carbon emitters for businesses is their own premises. And again, we have got a a specific tool available to help them understand what 
impacts could be made to their own business premises and what impact that would have on carbon reduction and EPC ratings, which not only reduces costs, uh, but also helps them reduce carbon and can give them some quite clear, tangible results from sometimes quite small investments, which can impact on their own ESG reporting. As I mentioned, they're being demanded, um, that, that, which is being demanded from them more and more and more uh, sort of recently. So I think there are some really simple things that we have already started to do alongside educating our managers to understand some of the challenges. But equally, we're trying to provide some propositional offerings to support them and help them with that guidance. And certainly, again, from the research, 62% are telling us that they see banks generally supporting them, which is fantastic news. We're all in this together. Um, but equally, they are looking to us and others in industry for more help advice and support. Yeah, and I just want to pick up on something that, that Dave said about collaboration along supply chains. It's absolutely vital if that is going to happen, that people are, are operating with clear data, offering them clear decision making paths, um, and in a way that has a, a common approach almost so that, that, that we can match apples and apples and pears with pears. Yeah, I, I think that's correct. And I think that when people go on these journeys, it's important that they measure the improvements they make and they sustain those improvements. So it's important that there's visibility of, of what they're doing and how they're going about it and where they go. I think there is a challenge between all these people in the sense that they will all have challenges, but the scale of those challenges will vary. So if you talk about cost, quality and delivery, they're, they're the same things that everybody will be considering but they'll be in a different ratio in each case, depending on where they are and what they're doing and what they're supplying in the industries they're supplying into. So if you like, there's probably an overall template that can apply to them, which then needs fine tuning to their actual needs. And whatever they put into that then needs to be measured and monitored and maintained. Dave, I, I, the companies you spoke with, you and your colleagues at Lloyd's, mm -hmm. Are they alive to the importance of data acquisition, um, management and accurate analysis in this process? Oh, they're, they're very, very um, attuned to the need to start to record uh, and measure not just the starting point, um, but equally then the improvements that they are making. So the, the supply chains are demanding that. They're keen to be able to demonstrate it and equally many are all too well aware that that they get left behind on this journey at their peril. Um, you know, I think there was a famous quote from Mark Carney when he was heading up the uh, the Bank of England some years ago that you know basically just said that SMEs that don't adapt will die and you know they'll go bankrupt. You know, it was a very very pointed message on the front page of a of the newspapers at the time. I'm sure you'll find it if you if you Google it and and I think it's starting to resonate more and more and more with SMEs. And I think the statistics from our recent research gives us great confidence that, you know what, these SME manufacturers are really keen to do this. Many are already on that journey, but the measurement can create some challenges. It can create uh, some additional work that, again, I'm sorry to repeat this, but, you know, our SMEs are the lifeblood and the backbone of this country, and they need the help and support to do this. And measurement is quite or can be quite a complex process and i think there's so many tools out there that uh, you know that are, again they just need a little bit of help um, and guidance in showing how but they definitely understand the importance and many are, are already starting to do that so much so that we have invested recently and we're part way through a, a pilot with clients at the moment it's in the public domain so i don't mind um, sort of sharing it but clients that bank with us um, we've developed a tool in conjunction with one of the big universities that help us create a starting point and actually calculate um, a client's um, estimated carbon emissions based on the transactions through their bank account. And those that have now opted to receive these reports, uh, you know, are seeing that it's 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 of great benefit. Uh, and, and of course, we're really keen to roll that out and expand that uh, proposition for our clients even further, knowing how important the SMEs, uh, coming back to your question, are seeing uh, the importance of actually measuring this uh, and having that starting point and demonstrating those improvements 
uh, for their uh, supply chains, particularly as scope three reporting becomes ever more important. Well, Dave Atkinson, thank you very much indeed for for joining in and myself in this conversation. Uh, Fantastic insights from uh, Lloyd's research. We're we're very grateful to you. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share a few words. My thanks as ever to Ian Crossley from Expert Rule Software and, of course, to you for watching. On behalf of Manufacturing TV, I'm Nick Peters. Goodbye for now.